is center stage. We're talking with 11-time NHL All-Star and Stanley Cup champion Brian Lee. Now, before we get to the quest for the cup, we have a little something on the show called Did You Ever. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Did you ever steal anything? Stealing. Just second base. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did you ever eat an entire pizza by yourself? Of course. Yeah. Did you ever ride the New York City subway system? All the time. Did you? Yeah, yeah, we used to come down to the games for the morning skates. I lived right up off of Broadway, and so it was two blocks away, right in the Penn Station. After you won the Stanley Cup with the Rangers, have you ever, since that point, paid for a drink in the city? <laughs> yeah, I, I pay for more now, I think. <laughs> yeah, <they're right>. <laughs> <laughs> they say you're the greatest Ranger of all time, one of the, if not the greatest American player of all time. You have your number hanging up in the rafters. Um, you're in the Hall of Fame. Do you ever walk past a mirror in your house, wink, and go, yep? <laughs> oh, I walk by and make sure my hair's still uh, all there. I go, I lose any more today. <laughs> Did you ever feel yourself feeling sorry for an opponent? When I'm watching sports, but when I was playing, no. Even never. if you were dominating that opponent? Yeah, no. Did you ever find yourself envious of another player's talent? Um, probably, yeah. I think there's lots of players that could do different things that I couldn't, that uh, I wish I could do. I wish I could shoot like Al McGinnis, mm -hmm. skate like Paul Coffey, you know, had the size of Chris Pronger, you know, like all of those things, but it wasn't something I'd dwell on. I was pretty happy with uh, where I was. Did you ever drop the Stanley Cup when you had it? I never dropped it, but never. I've seen it dropped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you ever drink out of it? I did. Yep. A lot? Uh, yeah, I mean, you pass it around a lot, so you need to take pictures drinking out of it, but it's not easy. It goes all down your chest and down your face. Like. You know, I, I think about that. It must be such a thrill, but what a petri dish of filth. Oh, I mean, yeah. ever think about it? All right. And that's when no one's cleaning it and washing <laughs> it, you know. All right, did you ever uh, want to join the MSG crowd in a pot van sucks chant? <laughs> I didn't because I got to know Dennis, and he's such a good guy, but I was there for his last game at MSG, and... Uh, I just looked to the guy next to me, I can't remember who it was, I go, what could this guy have done so bad? <laughs> Everyone had signs when you're allowed to bring signs in and they're all banging on the glass during the national anthem and the chants were going and I just shake my head. I said, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> you know what? Full disclosure, we had Messier here. He said sometimes he wanted to join in. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he played against him That's in the right. Edmonton and the Islanders. All right, so the 92-93 season, not good. Uh, Roger Nielsen, the coach, was let go. Rangers didn't even make the playoffs. Uh, and then you take a misstep in March. What happened that season? Well, just everything fell apart. We did have some injuries, um, but it was just a, a lack of execution coming off a successful year and then not being able to back it up uh, the next year. Now, the misstep was you took a step out of a cab and broke an ankle. Mm -hmm. Where was this? Well, we had just come back. I had gone head first in the boards a couple of months earlier and had nerve damage in my neck and uh, missed. Geez, I think it was six weeks or eight weeks in the time. So I had just come back and played, and I was out with uh, a bunch of the guys. We went to eat. Um, instead of just going around to where the parking garage was and then walking down the sidewalk, I tried cutting between the cars. So I took one step on top of the snowbank and put the other one down, and the other one slipped out. My weight caught, and I just heard it pop. Oh. And so then, I, of course, I limp around the other side, go in. And uh, my doorman actually helped me upstairs into my apartment, but I still didn't think it was a, a serious, serious injury. And I got up the next day, drove myself to practice. By the time I was there, it was throbbing. And so then they gave me crutches. I went and drove myself to the hospital and uh, went in, got it x-rayed, and they said, you got a broken ankle. I'm like, yeah, you're probably out wow. for the rest of the year. I started crying right then because you know, it was a disappointing thing. I had just come back from a serious injury, and now I had gotten hurt away from the rink. Um, so it was, uh, it was a tough year uh, personally for me and ended up being a tough year for the team, too. Now, the next year, the Rangers hire Mike Keenan as the head coach. What were your thoughts about that? Were you happy it was Mike Keenan? Did you have good thoughts? Um, I, I knew his reputation. As so you had bad thoughts. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no. My thoughts would turn bad as the season went on. <laughs> they uh, started out where I knew that uh, we would be pushed as a team and mm -hmm. uh, as individuals. And he was actually tougher on me and tougher on our team than, uh, than I expected at that time. Was he an annoying guy? Was he a guy who really pushed the limits with guys? 
he had a reputation of coming into teams and players that had been there for a while in the past would be traded while he was there and he'd bring in players that he was comfortable with. And I know James Patrick, who had been there four years more than me, was moved, moved out of there. And, and I know that he was trying to have me moved out of there too for really? a big part of the early year. And I stopped really wanting to win for, for Mike uh, at that point. And wow. it was for my teammates and it was for Mark. But we were, we were happy that uh, as a group, because there were other, I wasn't the only player that felt that way. There are other players that went through that too. And yet, there's so many positives about Mike with his practice, with his conditioning, with uh, his uh, attention to nutrition, his days off, his rest recovery. Uh, he speaks really well about uh, team approach and everything. And so it was uh, a unique experience for me um, as a player coach relationship. Now, the Rangers won the President's Cup again that year. Uh, you roll through the first two rounds, and then you run into the New Jersey Devils, and you're down three games at two in the best of seven, and then Messi makes a guarantee. <laughs> oh, you look at him and go, well, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure he quite made the guarantee. We always laugh about how it turned into the guarantee. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, I believe we're, we'll win tonight and go back to Madison Square Garden. So then we wake up the next day and we see the, the headlines front and back paper. Are you guys dying, though, going into the third period down? No, because we had just scored to make it two to one. So that made it. Um, yeah, we knew the Devils would be nervous, uh, wanting to to uh, close that out at home. And to be honest, they started to sit back in that third period, and we were able to get some more room on the ice and uh, be able to make some plays and you know get that thing turned around pretty quick in the third. Game seven, you guys win in double overtime, just to make it easy on you and the fans. <laughs> and then the Vancouver Canucks, and they take you to seven games. How exhausting! was that run how much pressure because you know that Ranger fans were dying for a Stanley Cup yeah I, I think that the Devils semifinal was the big uh, test for sure because we were behind it won that game uh, six and then you know really had the game won nothing till seven seconds left so to get through that and Matteau scoring now to move on we lost the first game but then we won the next three games so we were in that position um, where we felt we would get it done. Um, obviously, we didn't want to lose those next two games, but going back for game seven in New York, uh, you would think we'd be down and, and nervous, but mm -hmm. we were pretty confident that uh, Vancouver would be um, thinking about it now themselves. I don't know if we hadn't taken the lead in game seven, whether all of a sudden then as a group we would have tightened up and really felt the pressure of letting this slip away, but we were able to get those first couple goals, maintain that lead all the way through, and, and at least keep that uh, confidence as a group. Because so much emphasis was put on the drought, and they hadn't won the Stanley Cup in so long. Um, I've talked to some, some athletes when they win championships under those circumstances, and they feel it's less euphoria than just relief. What was it for you? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's definitely true. Right? There's just such a strong sense of satisfaction mm -hmm. as a group, and I think that's the beauty of team sports is being able to share that with everybody and see the reaction from your teammates, families, and people that have come in to watch, and you know, the trainers and everybody, as well as you know, the fan base that has supported you around that. So it's uh, the relief, is there's some of that there, no question. So for me, to be involved with that first one, to do it in New York, uh, all those things uh, was a real sense of satisfaction. A big part of why my jersey's hanging up there, why people look at me differently, um, is because of that one season. And to be able to do well in that moment on the big stage, I know, you know, affected the way people look at me for sure. After the Stanley Cup, there was another championship in Brian's future. We'll talk about that when we get back on the Center Stage.